this card really delivered as expected. Um, I really only watched the main card and I saw a few highlights from um, uh, from the prelims. So I missed the Malcolm Gordon fight. Good for him. I know Dennis Bondar was the a uh, pretty decent favorite, so good for him getting a knockout really early. Um, and uh, I didn't see the Philip Rowe Jason Witt fight, but I feel like I should have watched the first three fights because they were nice knockouts and early on. I did see the highlight of Jalton Almeida against Danilo Marquez. It's unfortunate. I do like Danilo Marquez. I thought he was kind of a similar type fighter to Andre Muniz. I had kind of, um, uh, I was kind of high on him. I, I actually made money on him when he beat Hadisa Ibergimov and when he beat. Uh, he was actually a, a pretty pretty decent dog against uh, Mike Rodriguez, so he's got that submission, so I had money on him. Uh, so I thought, you know, because he has really good submissions, really good uh, BJJ guy, but I think his striking is really not up not up to par from what I understand, because I remember, it's unfortunate, because he was about to go on a three-fight win streak. He was beating Kennedy Nichuki. Uh, um, I remember he actually almost submitted in the first round, was on his back, then he won, I think, the second round, and all he had to do was hold on for the third round. And uh, Kennedy ended up knocking him out because he the strike he couldn't handle the striking and he couldn't uh, you know take it Kennedy down anymore. So good for Jailton Almeida. He looks like a really good prospect. Uh, the next fight, Yulia Starenko Stel against Alexis Davis. I actually did not um, uh, like I said I didn't watch this fight, but I actually thought that may might be worth throwing some money on Yulia because she was such a big um, underdog. But you know, good thing I didn't touch that fight. Um, really happy for Chidi uh, Najukwani. Um, you know, finally make it to the UFC. He's uh, he's been, I think, around the regional scene forever. Um, you know, I did get to see that fight because I mean it was only 16 seconds. Um, so he had a beautiful knockout. Good for him. Uh, clearly has power in his hands. Really good guy. You know, guy. Um, you know, what a hardworking guy. What an inspiring story. His brother Anthony and and Jukwani, I think he was the first Nigerian in the UFC. Uh, I remember Kamar Usman was talking about that. Uh, but I do like Mark Andre Barrio, So it's unfortunate. You know, it's always uh, tough when you see two guys you like. Um, Hakeem Dawudu got a nice win over Mike Trezano. I mean, Hakeem is a really good fighter. He's always very like serious. He always has that uh, it's like ready to ready to go mentality. Uh, Mike Trezano is a good fighter. Uh, didn't watch the John Castaneda against Miles John fight, um, and that takes us to the main card. So uh, Julian Arosa, I saw a little bit of this fight. Uh, it was back and forth, pretty exciting. Um, you know, good for Julian Arosa to you know come to to basically able to pick himself up. People were saying he was chinny, but you know he was able to survive. Uh, I think Kiesa was talking about that he was able to survive and prove that he's tough and that he can take a shot. And uh, you know he's able to come back. And good for him. He won a double bonus, so he won a 250k bonus because uh, Stephen was supposed to get 50k for uh, performance of the night, but he didn't make weight. So you know Julian got it, got both. But I feel bad, man. Can you imagine? I know those guys don't make too much money and. You know, imagine how bad he feels that, you know, if he would have been able to, like, cut a few, you know, I don't know how much, I don't know how much over he weighed in that, but he could have gotten that 50K, which would have been amazing for him. But next fight was Brian Battle against Treshawn Gore. I feel really bad because I thought, um, you know, I still think, honestly, maybe it was a good stay away fight, even in hindsight, but I thought it was worth throwing some money on Brian Battle as a dog. I mean, the guy's clearly tested and tough. Treshawn doesn't have as much experience. Actually, it's uh, fortunate because I told um, you know uh, a good friend of mine to to inst I was I, <laughs> I had typed out the text for him to take Brian Battle and then I ended up deleting it and I told him you know to take Shavkat um, not Shavkat but the, on that Shavkat fight the over one and a half which is a terrible idea so I feel terrible because he could have gotten money as a you know uh, dog odds instead of you know the 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 favorite minus one fifty the fight's gonna go over and you know clearly I was wrong on that. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, Brian Battle, I really like him. Really, really awesome guy. He got more fit. It really tough, can take a shot and come back. He looked really beat up. The only concern is he's getting dropped a lot. I mean, he got dropped in his last fight uh, for the to, to win the Ultimate Fighter, and he got dropped again and almost finished by, by, by Treshawn. So, you know, he has shown the ability to come back, but you got to be careful taking so many hard shots. Sam Alvey against Brandon Allen. I was sad to see that fight. I mean, I'm always rooting for Sam Alvey, but I mean, he hasn't been able to get it done. And I think this is kind of the end of the road for him. Even though I love Sam Alvey, I mean, just sad to see him. He was like so mad at himself. I thought that he could get it done by knockout because uh, Brandon Allen hasn't shown the best striking defense, and Sam Alvey has some serious underrated power. And he did rock Brandon Allen. But Brandon Allen got you know good for him. He came back, uh, even though you know he's not a natural light heavyweight by any means. Sam Alvey's more so. Sam Alvey came in looking more fit. Brendan Allen was able to win by submission. I thought the play was either Sam Alvey by knockout or Brendan Allen by decision or both. I did mention that he could win by submission, but you know I should have probably stuck to, to, to that. 
But, you know, um, good for Brendan Allen. I think, yeah, so Sam Alvin, fortunately, I think it's the end of the road for him. I thought, you know, he was – there were so many, like, close times in his last few fights where he could have won, but, you know, it just didn't, didn't happen. So, um, but, yeah, good for Brendan Allen. Uh, next fight, man, Shavkat, the guy looks like a world beater. I mean, you know, like um, Kiesa said, looks kind of like John Jones. Looks like a future champ. He's so damn good. I mean, I could see Shafkat being the champ at 170 and Hamzat being the champ on 85, honestly, because Hamzat's a little is definitely bigger, you could see on his frame. Carlson's a really good fighter. His striking was sloppy, those are wild hooks, but he carries some serious power. I mean, he he knocked out um uh Impa Kasanganai. Um and um I mean Carlson is really good. It's sad he's an older fighter, you know, a really good guy. Sad to see him lose, but Shafkat, man, the guy's amazing. Guy looks like he wants to match the number of knockouts with the number of submissions. He was like seven knockouts, seven submissions. Now he's eight and seven. You know, he's going to get a submission next to, to keep that number up. But he's amazing. I mean, I feel bad that they pair them both, both up because they're good prospects. But, you know, uh, Shafkat, you know, he's going to leave a trail of destruction behind him. Carlston, I, you know, I, I hope he can come back. You know, I, I want him to, you know, pursue his dream. He's really good. But, I mean, I just don't see anyone beating Shafkat. He's too damn good. And uh, I, I remember the, I saw uh, the weasel had put up a video about, you know, how, how strong Carlston Harris is. I mean, he was able to stop the guy with his elbow, um, he stopped to get back up using his elbow, you know, and um, he's really strong, really strong grappler. But, you know, the striking is not even close to Shafkat. And Shafkat, I mean, looked like they were pretty much a, a stalemate in the in, in the grappling. Shows to you how good Shafkat is. I mean, the guys, you know, could be even better grappler than Carlston. That's Carlston's strength. Uh, next fight. Happy for my guy, Nick Maximov. I call this one right. I should have had him by decision, but I, I got, had the fight early on before the line was even available by decision. And actually, you know, it's unfortunate because the line went up on Nick Maximov, so I could have gotten a, even better odds, even if I had a money line. But, you know, I had a feeling he's going to able to grind Puna out. Puna's really good. My main concern was that he does train at, um, with, um, uh, what is it called? Oh my God, how am I forgetting the guy's name? The guy, Francis Ngannou's coach, really good amazing coach probably him and Cejudo could be like coaches of the year um how am I forgetting Francis Ngannou's coach Eric Nixick Jesus Christ what's wrong with me um you know uh I love Dewey Cooper too but I mean it doesn't look like Dewey Cooper was in the the corner of Puna but um Eric Nixick's really damn good that was my main concern I mean Puna's so flexible I mean he almost got into a damn split but, you know, and even after his, um, his like, I think his knee or something got screwed up, Nick was, you know, he's still able to fight back. Uh, good for Nick, really tough guy, um, you know, showing that he has that durability at a young age and no quit mentality, which is tough. I mean, a lot of people, it takes time to build that that ability. I mean, you see a lot of usually older fighters having that ability or even like in, if you look at uh, endurance sports, like you usually see like older folks having that toughness to run these ultra races. Usually as a young guy, it's tough to have that like you know, that resolve, uh, but he has it as a young age, good for him, you know, I love his cool tattoos, he has like the, you know, the Russian mafia tattoos, you know what I mean, <laughs> he has that kawaii cool and, and the, it's called like the cupola, which is like the, like the, the head, the, the, you see like on Russian churches, they have that, it's really cool, um, it's also funny how he talks just like Nate Diaz, and the funniest thing is that their main prospect, Nick Maximov, is someone who has the style that used to annoy the hell out of them, which is kind of crazy, so it's always fun, but uh, but his striking clearly got better. I mean, he was kind of looked in danger against Cody Brundage last fight, but in this fight, he actually looked pretty good on the feet. Obviously, Puna had the advantage, so Puna is fucking jacked. He looked like he was way bigger than Nick Maximov, very thick. Um, you know, I think it's also because Puna has bigger bones. I think Nick Maximov has smaller bones, so he might carry a lot of muscle on him, but just the, the bone structure is different. But good for Nick. You know, I see, uh, you know, the guy performed on the biggest stage of his career, call main event, so I see bright things in this guy's future. He's really damn good. Um, brings us to the main event, Sean Strickland against Jack Hermanson. So I had mentioned on a video, I think the play was Sean and Shafkat parlay, but instead I took, sh you know, I told, I didn't, I told my friend about shot, you know, the over one and a half and, um, and I ended up picking Sean by knockout, um, or submission. Uh, cause I mean, I think it was all together. I mean, Sean's not going to win by submission, but still, um, I should have had him by decision. I'm stupid. I, you know, I, I knew Jack was a tough guy and, I still I still thought that if Sean was on point, he could have finished Jack, but I'm actually happy that it happened that way because I love Jack. Such a nice guy, really down-to-earth guy. I saw the video of him like ice fishing. He just seems like a really nice guy. Always has a smile on his face, always respectful. Um, but Sean, man, the guy is – I think he's a future cha um, champion. I know um, you know, um, that's a big words, but the guy's the least hit middleweight. I mean beautiful. Like 
getting out of range, using the jab finally. Like you see so little MMA fighters actually using the damn jab, which is sad, but Sean knows how to use the jab. He's not even the tallest guy. He's like average height for the division. And he's actually a small middleweight if you look at him. But beautiful, just knows how to get in and out of range the first round. All he did was just set up the jab, 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 jab. And Jack was putting in so much effort to try to, you know, counter the one jab. And then finally he put one and two together and then, you know, more so. And it's funny, he only went buck wild in the last rounds. But, you know, good for him. You know, very clinical performance. He definitely cruised to the victory. Uh, I don't know what the hell was going on with that split decision. That's insane. I don't know what the guy was seeing. Maybe, you know, just, I mean, there was more effort out of Jack, but that doesn't mean that he's winning the fight. You know, it's hit and not be hit, but good for Sean. He's very honest with himself. He said, hey, I don't deserve a title shot after my performance. I should have showed up and done better, but um, but I think that Sean's going to might win one more, one more fight, and I like what Kiesel was saying, that he's like an anti-wrestler type because, um, you know, he's had really good takedown defense, and he just lights people up on the feet, so it would be fun to see him against Brunson, but, you know, most likely Brunson against uh, Kennedy or the winner is going to challenge for the title. Um Sorry about that. And, um, yeah, so, I mean, good for, good for Sean. I always love watching the guy. I love watching guys who, you know, who hit and don't get hit. I don't like guys who just have, like, a barn burner where they're just hitting each other with no defense. I, I don't think it makes a lot of sense. Uh, yeah, so I'm excited. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the breakdown of last night's card. I'm really excited for UFC 271. Actually, I'm more excited for Derek Lewis against Tai Tuivasa and Jared Cannonier against Derek Brunson than I am for Adesanya against Robert Whitaker. Because, you know, the truth is, I like both Adesanya and Robert Whitaker. They're amazing fighters. I do think the result might be similar. But I also, I really like the personalities of Lewis, Tai Tuivasa, Jared Cannonier, and Derek Brunson. They're all both, both amazing guys. Derek Lewis, what a lovable guy. Always rooting for that guy. But I love Tai Tuivasa at the same time. Jared Cannonier, what a soft-spoken, great guy. Derek Brunson, really good to see him, like, believing that he can win the title again. I remember that he was talking about how Henry Hoof made him believe in that, and that was amazing. And I remember, like, him hugging um, Henry Hoof after he was a big underdog against, um, uh, what is his name, um, uh, Edmund Shabazian. Good for him. You know, he believes himself. Love the blonde Brunson. And I'm actually excited for Bobby Green against Nazarat Hopcrest. I love Bobby Green. What an awesome guy. Nazarat is a really good guy, too. I think Bobby takes it, but um, you know um, I feel bad seeing him lose. Um, Andre Arlovski against Jared Vandera. It looks like uh, Arlovski is most likely going to win that fight, so good for him. He's going to be like, on a giant winning streak. Um, William Knight against Max Christian. I'm excited for that. Roxanne against Casey O'Neill. I'm excited for that too. And um, uh, yeah, Casey is a big prospect. Let's see the early prelims. Anything that's uh, Hernandez against Moicano is interesting. Uh, Carlos Olberg fighting again, so we'll see. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some. I'm excited to put out some videos. I'm definitely gonna put it out earlier, uh, rather than like I did way, um, uh, last week. I put it out pretty late, but I'm gonna try to put it out earlier. And uh, I'm definitely gonna put it out early. Not gonna try. Um, so I'm excited for that. Um, and yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. And please like and subscribe. And I appreciate all of your support. And uh, look forward to making some more videos. Thanks.